Hello. Uh, this is Wakim Anem from Courageous Mind. I am, uh, uh, you know, holding this webcast from Dubai. And the topic of the talk today is how do we rewire our mind for success? It's a very, very important topic for discussion and I hope it will be beneficial for all of you. What I've done is that I have taken a lot of data from various researches that have been conducted by various great uh, scientists on how the mind operates and I have taken the learnings from these uh, researches and applied it into uh, a program which can be used by corporations as well as by individuals and teams in becoming really successful in their lives. So uh, I'm going to talk about it and uh, let's start with the first uh, learning. The first learning says that uh, the mind is programmed to protect us from pain. Okay, so that's why you, when um, you make the New Year's resolutions, uh, you say that, okay, I'm going to lose X uh, kilos of, of weight and for that I will be training myself. But on the morning of January 1st or say January 2nd, uh, when you want to wake up in the morning to go to the gym to run, the, the mind tells you that, no, maybe we can do it tomorrow or the day after. And the reason for that is that mind wants to protect you from the pain because the pain of going and, and, and exercising. And to overcome that particular uh, pain, what you need to do is to count to five or 10. And that gives the time for the mind from processing from the amygdala, which is the, uh, which is the side of the brain, which is the prim uh, primitive brain, as you would say, which works on the fight or flight response versus taking the message to the prefrontal cortex, which is in the front side of the brain. And that's the, the mind of uh, reason, of logic. And once you start doing that, you are able to, you'll be, you'll get up and, and, and go. Uh, or another way is just jump before the count of 10 and, uh, and then things will work accordingly. So that's a big learning. So the first learning is the mind wants to protect us from pain. So what is the some of the implications of this. One implication I told you that it causes procrastination, it causes delay, we are sitting on things, we don't want to get them accomplished because we are fearful of the pain that we will have to go through it. The second is we become risk averse and risk averse because if we take the risks, uh, we feel that it is going to cause a pain. What if I lose my money in the stock market? Or what if the presentation doesn't go well in front of so many people? Uh, what will happen if I'm not viewed well, uh, uh, you know, th that's another, that would be another uh, issue. So that is an important element. The other one is it causes indecision. People don't take a decision. They, they, they don't uh, want to take a decision uh, because they, for the fear of the pain that it may cause. Then it's a resistance to change. We want to change. All of us want to change. Sometimes we know the situation is not working in our favor and we want to bring about a change in our life, but we don't do that. Why we don't do it is because the mind tells us that to bring about a change, we have to transform ourselves, which is going to cause us pain in the short term. Uh, I give you an example from my own personal life. When uh, this was way back, about like 13 years back, when I wanted to lose my weight, I had put on a lot of weight. And uh, for the first day I went to the gym, I started exercising and it was really very painful because uh, my ankles were hurting. I had put on a lot of weight, uh, but I continued doing that. My mind told me that, why are you hurting yourself? Uh, but I would just push myself, drag myself out at five o'clock in the morning and go to the gym and start running. Uh, for many days, it was really a painful thing. And I compounded it by having just two apples uh, at lunch and a, and a piece of chicken in the evening. And I lost weight from 110 kgs down to 78 and then I built it back to the 87 kg which is the right weight for my height. But for doing that, you really, really have to, uh, you know, hack the mind for, from it telling you that, you know, you should not be doing this or it is going to cause pain. Uh, and it really gets you into a fixed mindset. There are so many brilliant people that you will come across in the world and they will be fixated. They will be at the same place. You ask them that, why aren't you putting in an effort to achieve more in life? They say, yeah, it's, it's fine. I am good where I am. It's because the mind is telling them that this is, this is okay. This is okay for them to be in this position because going out and doing something is going to be painful. Uh, rather, 
going out and doing something is a learning exercise. You learn something and you become even better. So how do we rewire the mind for success uh, knowing this particular learning? So the first thing would be to have a motivation to break free of the pain. So the motivation can be in two ways. First is in my case when I had to run, I at that time had a slightly higher cholesterol level. So the doctor said, I have to give you medicine and I asked them that uh, what is the alternative? They said, then you have to lose your weight. So that was a pretty big motivation for me to go in to the gym and start exercising. So you need to find different motivations. If you are doing something like a decision, you start rewarding yourself with the first things that you do, some, some sort of a reward which feels as a motivation to you. Uh, second would be have rituals for, for change, you know. Uh, so what would be the courageous rituals? Uh, you decide in your mind that you want to make up, you want to bring about a, about a change in your life. So you do more exercises, you do uh, eat well so that your physiology is better, more attuned to taking the risk. Uh, be in the company of the people who are, uh, who encourage you instead of discourage you. Uh, you have to come up with your ideas and start just implementing those. You know, this the first step is always the most difficult in whatever you do. Once you take this first step, then all the other steps become relatively easier. Uh, another thing would be small wins to train the mind. So whenever you get a small win in the direction that you're having, you say to your mind, to your own self, that I'm doing progressing very well and I need to continue on that particular path. Okay, so doing that type of element will help. Like in a, in a case of a diet, when you have lost certain uh, kilograms uh, initially, you can reward yourself by a good meal one of the days, right? That could be a motivation. Or just feeling good when you start wearing, uh, l you know, smaller size clothes. It is in itself, or you feel, start to feel good. This can be, I'm just focusing too much on the, on the weight part. It can be any other thing in life, a business or investment or whatever uh, it's going to be. So the first thing that I want all of you to remember is that the mind is programmed to protect us from pain and that particular thing stops us from doing the things that we actually want or going beyond our boundaries and over time when we have the fixated mind these small the boundaries become bigger and bigger and we get completely entrapped into it and we have to get out of that so that's the first thing uh, the second uh, learning on the mind is multitasking drains the brain power Okay, so a lot of people I see that they say they're very proud of doing multitasking. Uh, the science will tell you that there is no such thing as multitasking. So you'll say, but yeah, but people are multitasking. They are on the, on the mobile uh, on one side, they are speaking to people as well as they are typing uh, or they are listening to commentary all at the same time. So what the science will tell you that what is happening is that people are switching between uh, listening to the commentary, to typing something on the Facebook, to uh, speaking on the mobile phone. They are, but the span is really, really small, which is like a couple of seconds each. So that's actually switching. And what switching does is it drains your energy. It takes away what science calls the oxygenated glucose, which is absolutely a must for your brain to function appropriately. So my suggestion to the people would be that avoid avoid multitasking try to do something for at least a good three to five minutes before moving on to something else and that level of focus will ensure that the decisions that you make or the work that you do is of the highest quality or standard so let's now talk about what are the life and business implication of this multitasking so multitasking the big problem is it causes as we talked fatigue and a huge amount of fatigue can be caused and I'm sure that many of the students and many other people in business when they come back home they are completely fatigued and this is caused because they're switching too much and with the advent of all this uh, digital communication and media it has made it even more versus what it was in the past second is compromised quality of work if your mind doesn't have the oxygenated glucose it cannot make the best decisions and what does that do it's the quality of work is affected you, you're thinking that you're multitasking. That's just a, 
self-fulfilling prophecy that you're doing great work because you have done multiple things simultaneously, but actually you're doing poorly the quality and it's, uh, it's not helping the company or your own results. Uh, the other one is again, it causes poor decisions. You cannot take decisions when you are not completely on top of your own self. So poor decision and the last one I would say is lack of concentration. Of course, when you're shifting, switching between one thing to the second, to the third, to the fourth, you would lack concentration. Imagine you are driving a car and instead of looking at the front, you start looking at the rear view mirror, then immediately start talking on the phone and then you, you turn your neck back to talk to someone at the back, what will happen? You're going to have a crash, okay? Unless you're a very, very uh, lucky person to survive that. Uh, so that is the, the problem. Having a lack of concentration or a fatigue or a comp compromised quality of work or poor decisions which are caused by multitasking. So how do we rewire our mind to come out of this? We need to develop concentration. It's very easy to say develop concentration, but the point is like, how do you develop concentration? Uh, the thing that one should do is to, to meditate. Meditation provides huge amount of focus because what you're trying to do is you just be calm, quietly, you're sitting, you're just observing your breath, you're taking it up and down, uh, observing what is happening, in your body, the sensations, and that enables you to have a focus. Your mind moves away from all the other things, just focusing on something, and that practice enables you to develop more concentration. Uh, focusing on one task at a time, initially it will be very difficult. I've seen a lot of people very fidgety. They are moving around, they are shaking their legs when they're sitting. This is all signs of nervousness. Uh, try to avoid those and try to focus on one task at a time. Initially it will be difficult, but over time, the mind can learn. Another trick of the mind is that anything that you do for 21 consecutive days becomes a habit. Okay, 21 consecutive days, it becomes a habit. So if you practice the concentration for 21 days, that will become your habit and it will become easier for you to do that. The next one is mindfulness, which I just talked about the meditation, it helps in concentration. Another one would be reduce distractions when distractions, when uh, doing important tasks. So if you're driving, just drive the car, please don't use your mobile phone. Or if you're using the mobile phone, it should be Bluetooth connected to your car system so that you don't have to take your eyes off while speaking with the speakers in your uh, headrest. So if you uh, otherwise don't pick up the phone and start talking, it's, uh, it's really, and especially no texting of the messages. Uh, so try to have like, whenever you're doing important thing or making business decisions, try to be completely calm. Uh, in businesses, sometimes I've seen that people will come in and say, yeah, the boss wants something immediately now, please decide what has to happen. You cannot make a decision like this, not like going into a candy store and picking that should I have a pink candy or a blue candy. You have to have the analysis and you have to make a decision, which is which one is the is the right thing to do in that particular case. So I would say the second key learning is multitasking drains the brain power, try to avoid it. There's no brownie points for saying that I've been doing multiple things because most likely you would not be doing them with the same level of uh, uh, effectiveness, with the same level of efficiency as you would be doing if you would have uh, given one uh, thing uh, more emphasis or concentration and then the second one and then the third one and then the fourth one. And I'm not saying that you just uh, not switch, but at least have three, four, five minutes between the switching and, and that is enough time for you to do. Uh, also another thing is that after every 30 minutes, you should take a break from doing whatever you are doing. Just stand up, walk, uh, it's really, really good. One of the things recently which I have started to do, which I didn't used to do in my uh, business or in my uh, job days, was that I always used to sit and work like many others. Now what I've done is like I have my own table which is much higher uh, and then I put the computer on it and I stand and work. Uh, it said that one of the most healthiest thing is to be standing while working, uh, to stand more. Uh, sitting causes type 2 diabetes, it causes so many uh, other issues which uh, you know just being sitting in a one place causes. So get up if you have to sit, get up, walk, uh, get some water. I wouldn't recommend uh, tea or coffee because that also drains uh, you know, your uh, overtime caffeine cause, uh, how should I say this uh, word? 
uh, it causes a lot of you can say a lot of uh, uh, issues so try avoiding all those type of things but drinking a lot of water standing and working is much better than sitting and working so we talked about two uh, learnings and how we can apply those in our lives now moving to the third one it's an interesting one which says mind likes familiarity mind likes familiarity so the more exposure we have to a stimulus the more we will tend to like it okay studies have shown that we are all attracted to what is familiar to us and that repeated exposure to certain people will increase our attraction towards them so when we watch a particular serial or a drama or a uh, or a or a movies we start to develop a liking for the actors or the stars because we see them more and our mind tells us that these people we don't have to be could be trusted and these people are uh, we don't feel any threat from them so we start liking why do we like the people in our family it's because of the same thing familiarity why do we like our uh, our friends whom we know since childhood because of familiarity so this is the thing which how the mind operates there was an interesting study which was conducted in 1968 uh, by zegnok yeah that's the name of the guy showed chinese characters to people from 1 to 25 times uh, and asking them to guess the meaning of these characters the more they saw a character the more positive a meaning they gave so first time they gave a negative meaning of the uh, of that character but later on as they became familiar with the alphabet they started to associate positive experiences and positive uh, meanings to those characters so this is how the mind operates so what are the life and business implications of the this particular learning so the first one is advertising uses this principle a lot so you see a lot of the people who are familiar faces are the ones who come into the advertisements because these are the people you like it's Shah Rukh Khan it can be uh, Tom Cruise it can be any of the the top stars or a football player or a cricket player in the advertising because you associate with those people and you, th you think of them uh, and it induces you to purchase the product so that's advertising uses this principle uh, second is challenges in integrating new people okay so when you come into an organization a new organization it says like how do you integrate a new person because they don't have familiarity and that's why you have it like they start to say this is an outsider until you people start to feel comfortable with your presence so when you're joining a new organization or you're moving from one country to the other it's very important to first uh, build trust amongst your team before taking certain actions uh, uh, certain things that you may say to some people who know you well uh, they may take it very normally versus when you say this to a completely new stranger uh, or people who you have met for the first time so that's very important this principle of mind liking familiarity uh, and uh, in this particular environment another thing can be innovation can be a challenge innovation is the lifeblood of any business of any organization and it can challenge that because you say that when new people are there or new things are happening people say no i want to hold on to what is already there because my mind is familiar with 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 this stuff so to go in and do something out of the box and to bring a completely discontinuous idea it makes it more difficult first the issue is of the pain that it caused which we talked as the first learning and the third one is it's not familiar because you're going into a territory which is which is completely new and going into the new horizons trying something completely different uh, it poses a lot of issue so the third thing is mind likes familiarity okay so what do we do in terms of overcoming that uh, in businesses I would say having longer assignments is better so that the team gets to know each other they know how people operate what are their styles of, uh, of working and once they know about how people operate they become more attuned to the working styles and are able to achieve more so that's that's important uh, keeping teams longer together it works uh, we have seen so many times in cricket when you have like even the best uh, individual cricketers put together as a team it doesn't work whereas you have certain average performing cricketers joined together under good leadership will deliver outstanding results the same would be football or any other game that you you want to consider or any organization school college you know uh, a business it can be anything so keep teams longer together third thing a suggestion is uh, repeat the key messages and the reminders 
okay so keep talking about the same thing so that the things become more familiar right so even if you're breaking a bad news when you talk about it talk about it talk about it then it starts to sink into people's mind uh, first time it's a shock but then it becomes they become receptive because it becomes familiar to them and the fourth point i would say is focus on culture and people during change absolutely a, absolutely a must uh, i'm sure that there will be many many people who are watching this uh, webcast who have immense experience of working in big organizations and i tell you this is something which is most important but generally it doesn't get into the radar or the focus of the companies is like managing the culture during the period of change and working on the sensitivity making sure that people are uh, get comfortable and trust the changes that are going to come using the people who people trust as the agents of change is very very important in the situation so we have talked about three now i move to the fourth uh, element now am i going at a right pace or i should go a bit slower faster uh, you can provide your feedbacks uh, i will you know adjust my my talk accordingly so the next one uh, i have here is fear and stress affect the mind adversely i think this is no brainer uh, anyone who has worked anywhere uh, or have studied will know that fear and stress affect the mind adversely and and huge hugely so chronic stress increases the stress hormone cortisol and affects many brain functions putting you at risk for many mood disorders and other mental issues okay so chronic stress causes the thickening of amygdala the the the, the flight of fight response type of a pre uh, prehistoric or you know uh, uh, brain that short circuits the processing paths to prefrontal cortex okay and reacts immediately to signals from the amygdala uh, fear becomes conditioned and entrenched so when the fear becomes entrenched that becomes your way uh, you must have seen many people you know they are worried for no reason they will say oh uh, even when you talk with them you say oh i am fearful of doing this i am fearful of doing that what if this goes wrong yeah of course anything can go wrong at any time but but why do you think this way this is a very poor way of living but it's not because they want their habits and their stress and fear has induced the brain to think in a particular way it has conditioned it to operate in a particular manner and that's what we have to avoid right because it's not a healthy way of living a life so the life and business implications are pretty straightforward uh it causes excessive worry and fear which is not healthy at all it causes people to be impatient with self and others so they are not very patient they don't listen you must have seen even it happens in family sometimes people are stressed you go to them and say hello and they say no i don't want to talk to you now that type of a reaction happens not because the person is bad or there's anything wrong with them it's just that they are stressed and because of the stress they start to act in a very irrational way Uh, another one is uh, uh, they have trouble in concentrating because they want to think of one thing the mind immediately goes towards the thing that they are fearful of that becomes a problem there was a one story i had read about uh, which is very very interesting it's from the uh, 1950s or 60s there was a lady from childhood she was very very scared about going to a dentist okay so she was so scared that she would never go to a dentist so one time she had uh, a problem maybe her wisdom teeth or whatever was the problem with the teeth so she they, she asked for the uh, doctor to come to her house and to treat her okay so when the doctor was treating her she died okay on the dentist chair now when the, ne the next day the news came out the people said that she didn't die because of the the surgery to the to the teeth or the extraction of the teeth she died because of the fear that was in her mind the fear killed her of the dentist and that is something we need to avoid what is it that you are fearful of in your life take it out it's not worth living a life by fear generally what i try to do is what i'm really fearful of i do it more uh, i try to do it so that my mind subconscious mind starts to accept it and and become courageous the whole idea of courageous mind was also this that you live a life full of courage a life where you overcome your fears to live successfully and happily that's the idea we live what depending upon where you are and the, the medical facilities that you get maybe 60 70 80 90 or even 100 uh, no one has lived more than you know uh, that uh, 
The point is the quality of the life. What is the quality of life? Even if it is 50, 60, whatever it is. But it has to be the good quality and that quality can only come if you're courageous, you overcome your, your fears in your life. So that's another one. Then it causes nervousness. People are nervous when they are, they are stressed or they are fearful. Uh, difficulty in making decisions, of course, if you're, if you're fearful, how can you take a decision? And if a decision is taken, it will always be uh, the incorrect one. Uh, then another one would be overreaction to petty problems. I just mentioned that someone just says even hello and then you just bust out or you start to interpret the things in the in a completely wrong way. Uh, so you have overreactions or defensiveness. Someone has said something, you say like, uh, listen, you're wearing a different clothes. So why did you say you're wearing different clothes? Did he mean that the clothes are not good? That is the type of defensiveness that you start to see. It's because of the fear or because of the stress which is induced by a fear because what is the stress? Stress is anyway caused by some sort of a fear of the things that are to happen in the future. Uh, you can be fearful of anything like fearful of public speaking, fearful of uh, you know, not being accepted, fearful of being judged by people, uh, that type of a thing because once you develop full confidence in your own self and you start to think that yeah whatever is going to happen I know who I am and I don't care about what people say care we care pe about people but we don't think about uh, that thing too seriously as to change our life I would always tell the people that you know an advice is something ex appreciate the advice that is given by by people with all due respect you can do two things with it either if you believe that the advice is good and in your own interest to change change that's one second is if you feel that the advice is nonsense what you do is file it in the waste paper basket. That's easy, but say thank you, because in today's time, no one has the time to think beyond themselves. This is what I have, I have found. But if someone takes the time to come in and give you advice, say thank you to them. Give them a hug. I always do this. I say they had the time to give an advice to someone else, meaning that they thought of someone beyond their own beautiful self. Such a beautiful thing, though. No? So be, be grateful instead of reacting to it or instead of pushing it back because you have the choice. You may not do anything with that advice. That's a choice that you make. Or you, if it is good and multiple people are giving you that, do some, take some action about it. Okay, so how do we leverage the mind in this particular case with the fear and stress? So the first thing is daily exercises. I would say it's one of the best thing because it, it produces serotonin, which is or a dopamine which helps you become happier, more motivated in life. So exercising like walking, jogging, running, uh, yoga or whatever, playing tennis, cricket, uh, football, whatever the thing is, try to have regular exercises so that your mind gets the right type of chemicals. We are all made up of chemicals. It's, it's, a, it's, it's about the chemicals in your mind. So create those chemicals, it's important and that you do through exercises. Doing it in the morning is better. If you do it in the evening is still okay, not a problem. But as long as you do the exercises every day. Second I would say is uh, uh, diet rich in antioxidants like fruits and vegetables. That would be excellent. Again, your entire physiology has an effect on your psychology, right? So what you are eating is determining who you are, right? We are all you, you eat a banana and it, it is your shape, right? It, it, this is what it is, whatever food you eat. So the nutrients that you provide to the body becomes really, really important. So eat the right thing, drink a lot of water, I would say. The other thing is mindfulness. You know, you have to spend a lot of time with your own self. The secrets to everything in life are residing inside you. You don't need to go to some of the wise people to learn about uh, things. In today's time, you just download on the internet, you can get any information that you ever wanted or more. But the important thing is how do you utilize that and how do you discover it yourself? Okay, like Socrates said that I cannot teach you anything, I can only show you the way. And that's the main thing. You have to discover it for your own self, you have to experience things, you have to fall, you have to fail, you have to then learn and, and progress in life and be happy because life is only for, for once. Uh, another important thing is sleeping well. I have heard a lot of people say, oh, I worked on this report uh, all night long. Sorry, why did you work all night long? Why didn't you plan so that you were able to do it earlier so you could sleep well, so the quality of your work 
could be much, much better uh, than what it turns out to be, you know? So you may have, everyone has their own uh, biorhythms in their lives. Some people are more nocturnal. They do this stuff in the night. Some are in, uh, love to do it in the morning. For me, uh, during the time of the sunset, it's the worst time. I never write anything at that time because I'm not productive. Uh, in the morning, I'm very productive. Or in the, in the night, late night, uh, when everything is quiet and calm and then, then I can do a lot more work. So these are some of the suggestions, which is again, I repeat for you, daily exercise, don't miss it. Do pranayam also, yoga breathing, fantastic. Uh, rich diet in antioxidants like fruits and vegetables. Drink a lot of water. Uh, do mindfulness exercises or meditation and sleep well. When I say sleep well, it doesn't matter that you say, oh, I slept for 12 hours. You don't have to have 12 hours of sleep. Even if you have five to six hours of quality sleep where your mind is completely rested when you wake up and you say, yeah, I have, I feel good. That's the type of thing that you have to, uh, you have to get and you have to be in a complete deep slumber and that you are into your dream world or whatever that's what is needed or do a power nap as well during the day whenever you get a little bit time just close your eyes do a little bit of mindfulness sleep uh, for say 30 minutes even that will give you more energy to come back powerfully uh, to complete your day with excellence so that's uh, uh, some of the suggestions now moving to the next learning okay we are doing pretty well in 30 minutes we covered i think uh, four or five so the next one is meditation is a powerful brain booster. Okay, so this is science saying, this is not Wakim Anim saying. Research shows that meditation not only changes the brain, but it changes our subjective perception and feelings as well. Okay, so it changes the feelings. There were also decreases in brain cell volume in the amygdala. The amygdala, remember this is the, the primitive uh, brain, which is responsible for fear, anxiety, and stress. And these changes matched the participants self-report of their stress level. So meditation is important. Now meditation has become a business. Everyone is talking about meditation and they will teach you like five minute meditations, 20 minutes meditation for law of attraction. Uh, you do this, you will become like this. I really have never understood that. Why is it that everything needs to uh, link to something materiality? This is where the, the people are going through and this is causing the stress to everyone because everyone has tried to associate that every relationship, every thing that they do has to monet, be monetized into something else. But why? First is like life is not about monetization. You may be a billionaire or a pauper at the end, you will have the same space in the grave or you'll be cremated or, or whatever way you, uh, you know, your, your customs uh, do. So living the life with happiness and that's what meditation provides. This is important, it provides the balance. It, it, enables you to think on your own instead of using of uh, giving out your you know uh, how, how should i say is uh, using someone else's brain instead of your own in taking actions that's that's a really poor way of of living your life so the implications of meditation i would say is like first if you're not doing it uh, or doing it meditation helps us gain perspective a broader perspective of the things that we have uh, improve our ability to focus by blocking out other distractions. So when you have the concentration, concentration enables you to have better focus, better results. It reduces stress. You can try it yourself. This just brings your uh, stress levels to a lower level. Just by doing pranayam or breathing exercises, it helps tremendously the human body. Uh, improves memory. It enhances collaboration with people because you're not uh, reactive but you are listening, uh, actively listening to what people are saying. So that creates better collaboration with people. Reduces blood pressure. You can test it yourself at home. After doing the yoga breathing, test your blood pressure before and after, and it will have a significant change. Uh, you'll feel less fatigued, and uh, people who do uh, meditation fall sick less. That's what the science says. So how to leverage in this case? is regularly meditate and I wouldn't say that there is a particular form of meditation. I give you another very interesting story. So I was in Geneva and uh, I heard about the transcendental meditation. It's an amazing type of uh, meditation which was, uh, which was developed by in 1960s. I forgot the name of uh, the guru who did that. Uh, even the Bee Gees, uh, they were um, using the transcendental meditation. 
the thing is that it's just a chanting of a, of a, of a word which doesn't even have a meaning that is assigned to you by the Guru. So I went to this uh, particular place and uh, this guy, he was a, he was a German Swiss and he told me that, uh, you know, it's going to bring about a huge change. He did about uh, 40 minutes of a lecture. Then uh, he said that you have to first join and pay. And they were charging me for this thing about $7,000, okay, for seven sessions or whatever. And all that needed was that they had to give you a sign a mantra or a word that I had to continually say in my mind. The word could be anything. It can be like... Uh, uh, oh ho, yeah, you can just anything and they would say that this is linked so I myself went onto the internet I got more data than what this guy was telling me it's available uh, and you should what you should do things uh, what your body tells you at the end so even if someone says this is the greatest thing it doesn't work in your situation what's the point so I generally try to do like test them on my own self before recommending to someone else right so I want to do the things and I tell you for the meditation I do what works for me is the yoga breathing breathing meditation it has worked for me for other people something else might work but my suggestion would be try it once you try this then it uh, then it, it it's it's beautiful whatever works in your particular situation but do take the time to regularly meditate it's going to be amazing Someone has asked me a question. I heard that uh, everyone has his own mantra word. Yeah, in transcendental meditation, it is true that this is what uh, happens. Uh, uh, but I don't know what is the significance of this or I haven't uh, that level of knowledge that I can share with uh, on this that why do they need to have a specific mantra for a specific individual? Uh, I, I'm not qualified enough on this one to, to talk about it. But, uh, but it is true that that's what they say, uh, that it is. Uh, the next one I would say is uh, uh, use power meditation or power mindfulness at work. Uh, whenever you have a little bit of time in the meetings, I would do this. Like uh, if this is like you have the same thing would be happening all the time in many of the organizations. People must be very familiar with. So uh, sometimes when the things were going becoming too much nonsense, I will just simply <laughs> do an ado below quietly to just keep myself calm and just pace through the day and provide my perspectives and uh, without uh, you know uh, saying something which is not politically correct uh, as well uh, the other one would be uh, have a meditation room at work it helps it helps and then teach meditation techniques if you have learned something share with others also learn from them what are their techniques that they are using because we need to help each other. This is now the world of social media. It's a world of about helping each other. Uh, but do it after experiencing yourself. What I am not very, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't recommend is when I see on Facebook people putting in things which they haven't even, even checked, they will send out messages which will say that Dr. Zung Li has said this. Who knows who's Zung Li? You know, it's like, who knows? And how does, how, what is the proof that it actually works? Is there a scientific research which is backing that thing up? Is it coming from the Mayo Clinic? It is coming from some of the top uh, universities of the world? No, it's just you put any, any name, you know, and, and then they, they sent it out. That's dangerous. But if you've practiced something on your own and you see that it has provided you a benefit, then yes, share it with your friends and, and colleagues. Make their life also richer and better. That is the biggest satisfaction one can get. That we move to the next... Uh, item which I believe is is amazing this is something which you need to uh, if you practice it's nothing new that I'm going to talk about on the mind but uh, it's now giving it a mind uh, angle but this is uh, you know known by everyone since ages and it's in every culture uh, and every civilization which is gratitude changes you and your mind gratitude is being thankful for the things that you have thankful to the people thankful for uh, the life that you have is the greatest thing it's the biggest uh, creator of dopamine it is like it makes you feel good when you're grateful so new research is starting to explore how gratitude works to improve our mental health indeed many studies over the past decade have found that people who consciously count the blessings and tend to be happier and less depressed so when you count your blessings in life you become happier you start to see that, yeah, there are so many people who are contributing to my life. 
There's so much that I have all around myself. In, and then you don't focus on the things that you don't have, rather on the things that you, you have. That's how it has to be. Uh, one study by a couple of American researchers assigned young adults to keep a daily journal of things they were grateful for. And this is known as the Emmons and Mac, uh, McCulloch 2003 study. They assigned uh, other groups to journal about things that annoyed them or reason why they were uh, better off than others. The young adults assigned to keep gratitude journals shows greater increases in determination, attention, enthusiasm, and energy compared to the other groups. So this is very simple. You just go in and say thank you. How much of an effort does it take to say thank you or to write a note to someone to say we appreciate what you have done for us. Our life is more enriched. You become even stronger. It's good for your own health, not for the other people. Most of the people are so uh, stingy about saying good things to others because they feel that their level will go down in front of the other person. I, I've always wondered like why people think this way. I take my opportunity in praising people and I go to a great extent in praising when I'm doing that. And, uh, and this is how it should be. You should say good things to other people. It's for your own good. It creates gratitude for the things that are given to you in your life. If you're not going to appreciate them now, when are you going to uh, appreciate them? So I would say gratitude, follow that. It's scientifically proven. It nourishes uh, the mind. So what are the implications of this in business and in life? It increases dopamine, as I said, making you feel good. So it's a good feel good type of a easy feel good type of a uh, remedy, which is so easy. You just say thank you. Uh, people who follow me on LinkedIn would have seen that I wrote a, a, a big article on one of my bosses because he helped me in my career. He gave me great advice. It wasn't that he gave me any promotion. No, he was a good man. He, and I, when he was retiring, he was leaving, I wrote a, a big letter to thank him for this and I've written this one I put it on LinkedIn but many others I write without uh, that but I try to say thank you to everyone this for my own selfish reason to be to have the dopamine to feel good to be uh, to uh, you know to live a good life lowers blood pressure and less and stress hormones it lowers those so that's important people who show gratitude are less depressed they're less depressed because they don't feel lonely they know that there are people around them who are helping them they can be trusted it's a better life to trust and be cheated than than to uh, remain alone uh, just in the fear that something might happen and and they might be cheated or they might be uh, you know their their, their trust uh, might be of uh, may not work with certain people it's a very strange type of living it's the same as saying i i will only drive my car when all the the lights are going to be green. Now, of course, when you drive, there's going to be accident, there will be uh, red lights. So you have to live your life in the right way. So that's uh, the thing. People who show gratitude, I talked, are less depressed, cultivates a culture of appreciation and teamwork. So when you're praising the other people, they also uh, uh, you know, reciprocate to how your feelings are and that helps create a whole atmosphere of power. I do one exercise which is very popular and, and I see many of the people are ones who I have worked with in the past or some of them are from my family even uh, on this webcast or my friends from, from school days. I can see their names uh, over there. Uh, I would say do a simple exercise. When you're in your family or with your friends, just do an exercise of saying three good things about each of the person and you cannot say anything bad. Just say three good things about each one of them and you'll see the type of positive things that you are going to generate. The energy would be vibrant. You will feel so great that how good the other people think about you, how great you feel for the other people and that's a power. We should use that. Instead, the norm is that you just criticize someone. You say, oh, uh, this person doesn't have this or this person is, why? Why get into the negativity? Why isn't it that we talk, look at the positive, say something good have gratitude, say, and be thankful for what they have done for you in your life. And it builds trust. So how do we leverage? Encourage a culture of gratitude by practicing it, showing, demonstrating it by example. Uh, thank often and publicly. You have to thank, say it in public. Yeah, I want to thank all the people who have been uh, on this webcast because you are busy people and taking the time to be here is, is already a great thing. So. Having the ability to thank is, is really good. It makes you feel good. 
reframe the situation to see the positives. You can see the negative or a positive in any situation. It's your, the way you are thinking, it's your lens with which you look at a situation. I give you an example both from professional and a uh, from a uh, normal life. On a professional side, when the market goes down, a lot of people will say, oh my God, the market is down. For some, they can look at it, great opportunity. The, the stocks are at a discount. This is the time to buy, All right? So you can look at any situation in a different way, like both positive or with every crisis is an opportunity. And that is important. So even when the crisis come in, say thank you and try to look of the, the silver lining in those because the biggest, the bigger the problem you face, the bigger the opportunity is to come out of it in a great, great way. Okay. Uh, re, uh, then the last one I would say is write personal letters of gratitude. Always write thank you notes to people. Say something good about them. Uh, I learned this a lot from my father. He used to be, I, I think, the greatest motivator I have ever uh, met in my life. He, when I was uh, outside, you know, most of my career has been outside of Pakistan. I hardly stayed in the last 27 years, uh, one or two years. And he would write to me letters instead of, you know, just making a phone call. Uh, he would detail letters and in all those letters he would say you are a champion, you are great and I'm so happy with you and how you're doing. It's like amazing. He would just pump you to be like, I would feel that I could conquer the world uh, with his presence. So why can't, and I try to do the same thing for my children and for the people who come in contact with me. In my own small way, I cannot be as good as what he was. But why can't each one of us be the same? Why can't we go out as form of a gratitude, also say good things to the others and, and, and provide them with, uh, with the energy, the power, the positiveness for living the life with, with passion instead of clipping their wings, you know, give them the wings to fly, to do better in their life, right? And in the process, you also uh, experience their success vicariously, no? That is, that is how it should be. So gratitude is really important and we should all uh, follow that. The next one is short span of focus. Uh, how much time? We still have a little bit of time. Uh, attention span is the amount of concentrated time a person can spend on a task without becoming distracted. Okay, so that's what a span of time is. Most educators and, and psychologists agree that the ability to focus and sustain attention on a task is crucial for the achievement of one's goals. Studies show that the attention span on average has gone down from 12 minutes to five minutes in the new social media world. So the short spans of focus, so people don't have the time or they don't have the, I would say, they don't have the, the, uh, the, the focus for lasting that lasts more than like five minutes. So this has a life and business implication, which is like long meetings can be unproductive. Yeah, because people don't have the focus, then after a while people are just being there, but they are not productive enough to do or say things which can help the, uh, build the business. Second would be decision made at the end of the long meetings can be dicey. Of course, when your focus span is so short as five minutes, or you know, for some people who have developed the capability to make it last longer, it's not going to last through the whole day. At the end of the day, you are really uh, exhausted, uh, with doing multiple things, your mind is telling you so many things, you have lesser oxygenated glucose that we talked about, then the decision making will be the worst if it is taken at the end of the day. Long presentations can be counterproductive. So when you're making a sales pitch, make it fast, quick and short. So that should be the, the way it is done. Need for better and sharp communication. Communication has to be like what you want to say, say it instead of going in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a circle all the time. Just say it straight. And I've really liked it, like even if you have to break the, uh, and I've learned this from the, the Swiss, if they have to break a bad news, they just say it immediately. Like uh, when I, I deal with the, these bankers and whenever they say if I've made a loss, they will just say, Waki, you have, we have lost X, whatever amount of dollars or whatever. They will say it first and then they will start to say, now let's look at it, what has happened and how we will get it back. But they will just say it straight. So that is important. Just say it. So that people just first get that thing and then they start to think about like how to uh, go about it. Because after like five minutes, if this, someone is giving a story, then you have lost the focus anyway. 
being prepared and active listening is important. Most of the people are just talking or waiting for their turn to talk. Instead, listen carefully to what is being said. It's important. So how can we leverage the mind in this particular case? So short and effective meetings, make the meetings short. Uh, you can have multiple topics, but break them down so that it's easier for the people and give a lot of breaks in between. Uh, then invest in communication skills. Communication is not about speaking English or speaking another language. Communication is about the art of bringing what is in your mind in such a simple way that the other person understands it clearly. It doesn't mean that they agree to it. That's a different thing. That is beyond communication. <laughs> That's persuasion. Uh, they may agree or they do, may not agree, but they should not say that I did not understand what you said. They need to understand it fully and then it's up to them what they want to do with that. Decision making follows similar formats of information. Yeah, so it's like shorter spans, so make sure that um, the formats are similar so people are, again I talked about the mind likes familiarity, so if you have familiar things, it makes it easier for the smaller, uh, shorter uh, spans of focus to be on the, the things which is brought to them instead of trying to understand the new format of, of things. The next one is, uh, uh, I think I have 10 more minutes, mind works with pictures and words. Okay, so the way that your mind understands how you feel about something comes down to two things. The pictures you make in your head and the words you say to yourself. The whole inner dialogue that you have with your brain is conducted by your thoughts. And those thoughts can be in pictures or words. So if you want to change the dialogue that you're having with your mind, change the words that you choose and the mental images you choose to focus on. What a powerful thing, yeah? It's like the words and the pictures that you have in the mind. Because how do we think? Whenever we think of someone, it's a picture comes into our mind. And then the power we have is the words that we use. So how can we use the words of power, of positivity uh, all the time? That's important. This is how you have to train the mind. So business implication is, uh, it's important. The story you tell yourself is important. One is a story, all the time we're telling a story to other people or there's a story that we are telling to our own self. That is the story is like, are you a victim in your story? That, oh, nothing ever good happens to me. I am a poor person who has been affected by the situation. The world has been cruel to me. Or this is a victim mindset and a victim storytelling. Another could be that person says, yeah, I see the challenges and I enjoy the challenges of life. And this is why it makes me feel alive that I have challenges and I can overcome those challenges by, by taking my intellect to a higher level, by learning, by experiencing things, and that's what I enjoy. So that's a completely different story that you're telling to yourself, and the story that you tell yourself has a huge impact on your success because it affects your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind then enables you to get to the things that you want in your life. The words we use have an impact on our brain. We spend more time communicating with ourselves that's true, when we are quiet, still there's a dialogue taking place in our brain. Uh, thoughts come as pictures or words in our mind. And storytelling is important in business as life. I think one skill that people need to teach in schools is the art of storytelling. Everything that you do in business or uh, in your life has to have a story to it. We like movies because there's a story uh, around it, you know, or to it. So why can't we also weave the messages that we give to the people in form of a story? It's not going to be that you'd start writing your note, uh, your memo by saying once upon a time. No, it's, but you get the point, which is more about like, it has to have a story. Why certain thing happened, then what needs to be done. So it's like something which is more joyful to read or something which brings your, um, you know, your focus onto. So that would be important. And how to leverage the mind in this case is use power words decisive positive and courageous decisive positive and courageous words uh, develop a positive story that you tell yourself the talk the self-talk that you give has to be positive you have to tell yourself that believe in yourself like i give you an example a lot of people have a problem in doing public speaking uh, this is considered a bigger fear than fear of death but if you tell yourself that these people have come in to listen to me they have taken out the time to listen, they are there with me. That gives you the confidence. Then you can come in and start talking. And that gives you the confidence, the courage, 
and you feel comfortable in sharing the knowledge that you have with other people. Uh, very different things, right? So the story that you tell, if you were saying, oh, this is a crowd of people who are there to bring me down. Now, of course, they will do nothing. You will bring yourself down. But if you tell that I am great, things will be fantastic. These are lovely people who are there to uh, cheer me up. Then the result will be very different. So it's important the story that you tell to yourself each day and each time a negative thought comes, you say, no, that's not me. I am different. My story is I'm the hero of this story. Uh, live your story. Whatever your story is, live that story. If you are a Tom Cruise or a, I don't know, Michelle Pfeiffer or whoever the actor or actress is in your story, you have to live that life. You live your own life. What is the dream that you have set for yourself? Go in and accomplish that. That is important. We live only once. Uh, memos, presentations, etc. should tell a story. So that would be another key, key point, I would say. Uh, then, uh, let me see, yeah, just two more points left. Uh, the next one is uh, having a dopamine for higher levels of motivation. I'll make it uh, short, this one. Uh, this is like research shows that people willing to work hard have higher dopamine levels. Uh, motivation happens when there is a surge in dopamine levels, record small accomplishments, share results with your team, stay on task with the micro deadlines and focus on how great you will feel when you accomplish the results. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, constant motivation at workplace, uh, that is one way in which we can build it. Proper nutrition uh, to increase serotonin in your body. Learn the techniques of self-motivation, strong performance management. It's like these are the type of elements that are needed at the workplace. It's uh, very, very important, the motivation that you provide. It's uh, one, the story that you tell, and then the next one is the motivation that you give to other people or you receive from the other individuals. Uh, use thought vitamins, share an inspiring vision, motivate individuals and teams, and build strength. Motivation, sometimes people also have a very, very weird perception of motivation. The, what I see is like motivational speaker, they start jumping up and down and shouting, and then they think this is motivation. This is nonsense. Uh, motivation is something which you touch the heart of the other people that they believe they say yes I agree and there, there's a emotions that come out which say I will be able to do the thing that I wanted to do or the idea which I was pushing back on because the mind was avoiding it because of the pain that it may bring you say I'm going to do that I'm going to achieve that and even more that is motivation and the motivation may come by listening to someone or it may just come to you one fine day, you, you're just motivated, you feel motivated. Then when you're motivated, you're operating in your zone of peak performance. So it's absolutely a must to learn the art of motivating yourself, of like how, what are the things, what are the triggers that motivate you to do things, right? So learn that and also you can learn that by practicing it, by motivating other people. Then you understand a lot uh, of how things would be motivating uh, you. The final point I want to make is power minute. So what is a power minute? One minute per day is enough to bring about a lasting transformational change in us. For example, if we are stressed, we should start by doing one minute mindfulness exercises each day. The power minute can be an effective tool for transforming individuals and teams. So if you don't have much time, spend at least one minute a day. I think we can all uh, find one minute of time in our lives to spend on our own self and uh, it's pretty easy to do that so I would recommend that try doing that so I talked about uh, 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 several uh, learnings that I have and how we can leverage the mind I will just repeat the top headlines the mind is programmed the first learning was that mind is programmed to protect us from pain and uh, that causes procrastination risk aversiveness indecision and we have to uh, find motivations and rewards to overcome that. Then we said multitasking brains, the brain power, it reduces the oxygenated uh, glucose. So we need to be, we need to create more focus, concentration, mindfulness. Third is mind likes familiarity. That's the whole principle of advertising. So what we need to do is have longer assignments, keep team together, repeat the message several times and so on. Another one we said is fear and stress affect the mind adversely. So overcoming the fear would be Daily exercises, diet rich in uh, antioxidant, mindfulness, sleeping well would be a solution. 
Meditation, we said that it's an absolutely an important thing for us to do. There could be various ways of doing meditation, uh, but this would be, uh, you know, you can follow whatever one works for you. Uh, gratitude is really powerful. So we talked about that how it has an impact on your, on your, on your mind and even the, the chemicals in your body, which affects again, your mindset and your mood. Short spans of focus, uh, we talked about that the focus uh, in people in this new social media world has dropped from 12 minutes to five minutes. So we need to uh, have our messages in a way that uh, uh, these are done uh, in a short way, right? Um, oh, I think I, I lost people on, just one second, on the, on the Instagram. Somehow I lost the people. It says your video will be available soon, just one second. Okay, I'll continue with the Facebook. It's, uh, this one is not working. And then I talked about uh, mind works with pictures and words and, uh, uh, and then that we need to have dopamine for higher levels of motivation. Uh, and the final one was that we need to have, take out a power minute uh, every day. So I hope uh, this has been one hour. Uh, this is, these were the, some of the learnings that I found from a lot of researches that were done in different places. All I did was I took the researches took out the key learnings and then developed a program and I just gave you the, the top lines of the program through this particular webcast and we'll be happy to talk this in more details with the people and uh, even to conduct certain uh, trainings uh, which I do anyway. So I wish you uh, a great weekend ahead of you. Thank you so much uh, for joining. Uh, it's been great having you on the webcast. Bye.